Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. 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 Please join together as we say the words we say each week to light our chalice flame. We light this flame as a symbol of new life enlightening our way, as a symbol of the warmth in every human heart. Let the lighting of this flame rekindle in us the inner light of hope of peace, of love. May we share that light with all people. Good morning. French hoops that don't doesn't always work well. There you go. Okay. Uh, we are so glad to welcome you here to the Fox Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowships this morning, whether you're joining us at the fellowship or from home. If this is your first time here at the fellowship, I want to extend to you a special welcome. My name is Christy Jean. <laughs> Excuse me. My name is Christy Jean. And I've recently become a member of the fellowship, although I live some distance from here. I was aware of the Unitarian Universalist principles and of the Fox Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, and I've watched services online during the pandemic. Last summer, I temporarily moved to Appleton, and Mary Luna and the many of the fellowship members here were instrumental in helping me get connected and involved with the fellowship and in the community. You see, Besides being a parent, a grandparent, and a veteran, I'm also an older, happily married woman of a later transgender experience. Actually, it's been a lifelong transgender experience. I first understood that I was transgender at the age of 14 and first uttered those words to another person at the age of 21 after contemplating suicide. It's taken me some 40 years to come to this level of self-acceptance. My temporary move to Appleton to live as Christy, my authentic self, and the acceptance I experienced from the Fox Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship and the people of Appleton was instrumental for me finding such self-acceptance and growth. Through the fellowship, I've been an, an usher, including today, attended women's groups and game nights, created frozen meals for the food pantry, and now I'm happy to provide you this welcoming message to you. I made my financial pledge for the coming year, and I've already paid online. I ask you to join with me to keep the fellowship a vibrant community. It takes volunteers and financial donations, so please consider giving in any way you can. Again, if you're new here, welcome. Our Director of Congregational Life, Marie Luna, would love to help you get connected, just as she did with me. Feel free to chat with her after the service or contact Marie by calling our office or emailing her. And now it is time to settle in, take a deep breath, become aware of your body, allow yourself to come to, into the sanctuary so we can be fully present to this time together. It's good to be together. Thank you so much, Christy. 
We are gathered here together, both in this room and from our own homes. We're so happy to see you and so glad to have you with us. <clears throat> our call together is entitled One Love, and it's written by UU minister, the Reverend Dr. Hope Johnson. We are one a diverse group of proudly indeed spirits, here not by coincidence, but because we choose to journey together. We are active and proactive. We care deeply. We live our love as best we can. We are one. Working, eating, laughing, playing, singing, storytelling, sharing, rejoicing, getting to know each other, taking risks, opening up, questioning, seeking, searching, trying to understand, struggling, making mistakes, paying attention, asking questions, listening, living our answers, learning to love our neighbors, learning to love ourselves, apologizing and forgiving with humility, being forgiven through grace, creating the beloved community together, we are one. Come let us worship together. As Unitarian Universalists, we strive to encourage a spiritual stance of abundance. We reject the scarcity mindset with the fear and shame around resources. So we take this time every week as a moment of practice, of taking stock of what we have, cultivating peace when we need to ask for support, and giving with joy whatever we're able to offer. For those of you who would appreciate some support, we are here to help. Please do not hesitate to reach out to Minister Allie or Reverend Christina if you are in need of financial support or emotional support. It is a joy for us to be able to offer help on behalf of this beloved community. And if you are one who is feeling stable and able to give, we ask that you do so in that spirit of abundance. Our offering today is a special collection for United Help Ukraine. The war in Ukraine has certainly been on our hearts these past few weeks. United Help Ukraine is currently providing medical resources and humanitarian aid to people in Ukraine during this devastating and scary time. To give to our United Help Ukraine special collection, if you're here in the sanctuary, you can come up to one of the offering baskets, which will, the ushers will have at the back of the sanctuary. You can also raise your hand if you would like an usher to come to you. If you're writing a check, please note United Help Ukraine in the memo line of your check. And of course, anyone can donate online or via text to give function on a smartphone. But when you do so, please follow the instructions in the order uh, or on the slide. Uh, so that you can note that your donation is for United Help Ukraine. Thank you so much. Your gifts are deeply appreciated.
Our settling song is When Our Heart is in a Holy Place, 1008 in the Teal Hymnal, and the lyrics are also on the screen. When our heart is in a holy place, when our heart is in a holy place, we are blessed with love and amazing grace. When our heart is in a holy place, when we trust the wisdom in each of us, every color, every creed and kind, and we see our faces in each other's eyes. Then our heart is in a holy place. When our heart is in a holy place. When our heart is in a holy place. We are blessed with love and amazing grace. When our heart is in a holy place. When we tell our story from deep inside And we listen with a loving mind And we hear our voices in each other's words Then our heart is in a holy place When our heart is in a holy place When our heart is in a holy place we are blessed with love and amazing grace when our heart is in a holy place. When we share the silence of sacred space and the God of our heart stirs within and we feel the power of each other's faith, then our heart is in a holy place. When our heart is in a holy place, when our heart is in a holy place, we are blessed with love and amazing grace. When our heart is in a holy place, when our heart is in Our first reading this morning is an excerpt from Widening the Circle of Concern, a report from the Unitarian Universalist Association Commission on Institutional Change that was released in 2020. It says this, justice-seeking practices of Unitarian Universalists are often not grounded on spiritual or ritual principles. Instead, justice-seeking takes the place of ritual and religious life. Justice practices cannot be used as surrogates for deepening our spiritual lives. Nevertheless, amidst the diversity of the theologies represented in our congregations, justice work has been a proxy for what we believe in some congregations, while in other congregations, engagement with the intellect, debate, and social ties have been the substitute. Our justice work without theological resources and spiritual practices leads us down the path of burnout. Many of us have come to this faith seeking an alternative faith home and drawn by its actions in the world. Yet we don't often work to heal from our religious past. Those most harmed by the divisive and stressful times we live in are in need of faith tenets that can hold us fast in confusing times and help us make ethical and values-based choices about how to engage. Our second reading is two excerpts from Fierce Love, 
a bold path to ferocious courage <clears throat> and rule-breaking kindness that can heal the world. This is a book written by Christian minister, the Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis. She's currently the senior minister at Middle Collegiate Church in New York City. She says this. For some folks, talking about love sounds weak. But from my point of view, love is the strongest force on the planet. I learned my favorite definition of love from one of my seminary professors, the late Dr. James E. Loader. He defined love as a non-possessive delight in the particularity of the other. All these years later, I am still so moved by this sentiment. Non-possessive delight sounds like devotion to me. Rather than trying to change, manipulate, or devour the object of our affection, fierce love delights in the particularities of who they are. So when you love yourself, you take delight in the unique particularities that add up to you without judgment. Later on in her book, the Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis goes on to say this. Our calling is to fulfill the dream of a loving and just society. I want to convince you and convert you. We are people with such goodness inside, so much love inside to give. I write to encourage you to enlist your heart in a movement of love and justice that needs your particular voice and viewpoint. You are the only one standing where you stand, seeing what you see, positioned where you are positioned. You are there for a reason. To have, as my dear friend Ruby Sales says, hindsight, insight, and foresight. I want us to learn to see with our eyes wide open how best to be healers and transformers. I want us to really see, to be to fully awaken to the hot mess times we are in and the incredible power we have to love ourselves into wellness. We are the ones, folks. We are the midwives to help the world give birth to its better self to learn to walk with whichever higher power speaks to us, we absolutely must walk with one another into tomorrow with full sight. I invite you to believe assiduously in how lovable we each are and in the love between us and among us, because actually believing is seeing. Hear these words. Our song today involves everyone in the room. Uh, Life Calls Us On is a beautiful work written by Jason Shelton, and a lot of us have sung it a couple times before, so you all sing out nice and loud. If you've never sung it before, sing out even louder. <laughs> we'll teach you how it goes in the first one, and Tony's going to be leading you. Thank you, Tony, um, for all the congregational parts. So here we go. now we gather for the blessings we have known with a pledge to one another that we journey not alone joy and sorrow make us one that lives and dies love calls us on love calls us on words and deeds 
needs and those before us. Wake and hear to keep us strong. Blend our voices in the chorus of creation's living song. Courage bids us lift our eyes Upward to the shining skies Hope calls us on Hope calls us on Loyal guides in love and duty us with a trusted life. Blessed are they in inward beauty, shows the path of truth and right. Honor is the earthly prize. By their work we Spirit's gracious power Dreamed of good and yet shall be Bright the path before us lies Joyful pilgrims now we rise Life calls us on Life calls us on Life calls us on. 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 There is an interesting line in the 2020 UUA document called Widening the Circle of Concern, a document that addresses how Unitarian Universalism should be addressing social justice, specifically racial justice. It reads, quote, justice seeking practices of Unitarian Universalists often are often not grounded on spiritual or ritual principles. Instead, justice seeking takes the place of rituals and religious life. Justice practices cannot be used as surrogates for deepening our spiritual lives. Well, that really got me thinking, especially that last line, justice practices cannot be used as surrogates for deepening our spiritual selves. That term spiritual is a very slippery one. If we were to poll everyone in attendance at this service uh, or at home, my hunch is we would get a variety of definitions and interpretations of that term, such as life in a UU congregation. For those of us coming from a theistic orientation, spiritual might mean 
getting in touch with power and strength from a higher place. From my perspective, speaking as a humanist, I interpret spiritual as meaning the deepest dimensions of human experience. And one of those deepest dimensions of human experience is that of empathy. If we look at our first UU principle, the vision of the inherent worth and dignity of every person, I would propose that the starting point for the way in which we put that principle into action is the experience and practice of empathy. The term empathy has a, a good definition on the website for author Karen Armstrong's Charter for Compassion. Quote, the ability to be aware of, to understand and to appreciate the feelings and thoughts of others, end quote. It goes on to say, if a person has difficulty with exercising empathy, quote, they will often have difficulty understanding what others are feeling and thinking and in giving due consideration to those feelings and thoughts. As a result, these people are often involved in misunderstandings and strained relationships. They may find it difficult to act with compassion, end quote. So working from the idea that our spiritual lives are the deepest dimensions of our natural human life, it would follow that cultivating empathy would be a very good thing to do to make that spiritual life robust, especially so if our pra justice practices should stem from our spiritual selves or lives, as the UUA document says. So how do we go about cultivating our empathy so that we are more able to effectively act with compassion and kindness? The Charter for Compassion website has several suggestions. Among them are, make a habit of, express, of expressing your appreciation of others every day. Ask yourself, what is this person feeling, especially in difficult situations? Learn to listen by reflecting thoughts and feelings back to others. Ask gentle questions. What can I do for you? What do you need? Become an observer of how people express their feelings back to others. Attempt to see a tough situation from another's perspective. Develop a sincere interest in other people by asking yourself, what they have to teach you. Another way to develop and cultivate our empathy includes meditation. The Greater Good website, which I would recommend to all of you, notes that neuroscience research by Richard Davidson and colleagues suggests that meditation, specifically loving kindness meditation, which focuses on concern for others, might increase the capacity for empathy among short and long-term meditators alike, although especially among long-term meditators. The Greater Good website also brings up this disturbing but not too surprising nugget, quote, research has shown that attaining higher socioeconomic status diminishes empathy, perhaps because people of high socioeconomic levels have less need to connect with, rely on, or cooperate with others. As the gap widens between the haves and the have-nots, we risk facing an empathy gap as well. This doesn't mean that money is evil, but if you have a lot of it, you might need to be more intentional about maintaining your own empathy toward others." End quote. So by my lights, our empathy is one of the major ways that we can go about the deepening of our spiritual selves on which our justice making, our compassion and kindness rely. And there are very, there are very, very many practical ways to cultivate it. Here's how my fellow humanist and one of my favorite writers, Kurt Vonnegut, put it in his novel, God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater, giving the following advice to newly arrived infants. Hello, babies, welcome to Earth. It's hot in the summer and cold in the winter. It's round and wet and crowded. At the outside, babies, you've got about 100 years here. 
There's only one rule I know of, babies. God damn it, you've got to be kind. Thank you so much, Mike. And thank you to members of our choir for Life Calls Us On. My spirit was stirred with that one. What makes racial justice work urgent for you? This question came up four years ago at an anti-racism workshop I was attending. The facilitator of the workshop had us break out into small groups to discuss our answers. What makes racial justice work urgent for you? There was a buzz in the room as people began to share. Personally, I felt self-conscious. As a white person, I'd never given real thought to this question before. I scooched my chair closer into my little circle so that I could focus on what one person was saying about colonialism and the erasure of his native Hawaiian people. When it was my turn to talk, I opened my mouth to speak just as the workshop facilitator approached our group. She had been floating around the room, listening in on different conversations. I stumbled over my words a little bit as I began to share the best answer I could come up with at the time. Well, aside from all the injustice in the world that of course makes racial justice work urgent, um, I recently left my job as a teacher all of the students at my school where I taught were students of color. I could see everything that they and their families were going through and I think of them and I feel the need to fight for them. Before we could move on to the next person in my group, the facilitator looked at me thoughtfully. That's great, she said. But what makes racial justice work urgent for you. Her eyes were steady and kind as she held my gaze. I paused, not sure what to say next. No way, I, I mean, I really love my students. I feel like they're a part of me. They're, they're a part of who I am, I continued. That's great, she said. And then she repeated her question once more. What makes racial justice work urgent for you? Her question has haunted me. She walked away to be with another group before I could come up with a better answer. I was left with a pit in my stomach. What does make racial justice work urgent for me. If I'm honest, that, that almost felt like a dangerous question to be asking myself. A dangerous question because what if I didn't have a good enough answer deep down? What if I took a long, hard look at myself and found that racial justice work didn't actually feel urgent for me? What would that say about me as a person? What would that say about my character, my values? What would that say about me as a Unitarian Universalist? What makes racial justice work urgent for you? What makes economic justice work urgent for you? What makes immigration justice work urgent for you? What makes environmental justice work urgent for you? 
What makes gender and sexuality justice work urgent for you? Not urgent for others, not urgent for your loved ones, but urgent for you. Perhaps for you, the answers to one or more of these questions comes easily. Perhaps you feel yourself bumping up against injustices every day in your lived experience. Perhaps you find your well-being, your dignity, your life at stake with these issues. Perhaps that's what makes this work urgent for you. Or perhaps like me, you have some trouble answering one or more of these questions. What makes justice urgent for you? Urgent for you personally? Does that feel like a dangerous question for you? Like it did for me? Some of us might hear this question as a challenge. A challenge demanding that we somehow demonstrate that we are indeed good people, loving people, people with conscience and morals. We may answer the question by listing off the rallies we've been to, the activists we've marched with, the politicians we've supported. You may feel the need to say, no, 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 you don't understand. I get it. I've done stuff. I'm woke. I'm on the right side of history. It's so easy to feel this need to prove ourselves. And I can't help but wonder if that impulse gets in the way. What is it that I am trying to prove? Where is that impulse coming from? What is the discomfort that is driving me right now? How might that be getting in the way? That question, what makes justice work urgent for you? At its core, that is a spiritual question. It's not a challenge. It's not a litmus test of character. It's a question that points out the fact that justice work is important and urgent in our world. And we need to know that in our bodies, in our bones, if we do not know that already. The more I've sat with this question and with the discomfort it brings up in me, the more I believe that our Unitarian Universalist faith guides me toward a meaningful answer. And this, my friends, is the good news that I offer all of us today. In a workshop at the 2019 UU General Assembly in Spokane, Washington, UU theologian, the Reverend Dr. Sophia Bettencourt, was asked, what the meat of UU theology really is. She responded that to her, the meat of UU theology was this message that we are all loved and we are all worthy of love and we are safe together. She went on to say, what that means to me is if you cannot express how you are with someone who is different from you in a way that models the complete worthiness of the love of that person, then you are not actually living out your faith. And whatever goodness and realization of your own living actually isn't complete until that person has the room to fully realize themselves as well. Now I'd like to read that again because there's a lot of juicy stuff in there. We are loved. And we are worthy of love. And we are safe together. 
And what that means to me is if you cannot express how you are with someone who is different from you in a way that models the complete worthiness of the love of that person, then you are not actually living out your faith. And whatever goodness and realization of your own living actually isn't complete until that person has the room to fully realize themselves as well. We can't realize our own goodness. We can't realize the full potential of who we are until those we are in relationship with can fully realize themselves and their goodness and their love as well. That's part of that interdependence that we're always talking about. We can't be truly living out our faith until our relationships with each other and with the world reflect this worthiness and love from all angles. Am I truly living out my faith? Perhaps that feels like another dangerous question. Perhaps I'm afraid to know the answer. But Unitarian Universalism calls us to have the courage to actually ask these questions and to seek out the answers. Maybe as we ask questions, we uncom uncover some discomfort Maybe we uncover some guilt around feeling like we're not doing enough. Maybe some of us find some shame, shame around privileges that we hold. But our faith invites us to replace these feelings with some radical truth telling being open and honest with ourselves about our relationships to others and to the world around us. Earlier, you heard Mike share some radical truth-telling from widening the circle of concern, a report shared in 2020 by the Unitarian Universalist Association's Commission on Institutional Change. Justice practices cannot be used as surrogates for deepening our spiritual lives, the report said. Nevertheless, amidst the diversity of the theologies represented in our congregations, justice work has been a proxy for what we believe in some congregations. Our justice work without theological resources and spiritual practices leads us down the path of burnout. For many of us you use, a focus on social justice is a major part of what brought us to Unitarian Universalism. But justice cannot be the center of our faith. Fighting for social justice is a necessary response to deep harm in our world. It is important work, it is spiritual work. And it is part of a bigger picture. And we need to see and feel and know that bigger picture in order for our justice work to be truly transformative and sustainable. In order for many of us to understand and know its urgency. There's an episode of The Simpsons you may have seen that opens with an ice cream festival at the Simpson family's church. Lisa Simpson is marveling at the flavors available. Wow, look at all these flavors. And she starts listing them off. Blessed Virgin Berry. <laughs> Command Mint. Bible Gum. The minister then hands her a bowl saying, or if you prefer, we also have Unitarian ice cream. Lisa looks in the bowl and sees that it's empty. There's nothing here, she says. 
Exactly, says the minister. It's a short little scene poking fun at us Unitarian Universalists, teasing us by saying that we don't have anything that we believe in. And I think there's many UUs who wouldn't see a problem with that. But this passage from Widening the Circle that we read earlier, it, this passage is telling us that we need to understand that there actually is something in that ice cream bowl. And in order to live out our calling as a justice-seeking faith, we need to know what it is. We you use, we don't have a creed. But that doesn't mean we don't have something that we do believe in as a faith community. Unitarianism was the name for the idea that God is one. Universalism was essentially the idea that God is love and that love is for everyone. So Unitarian Universalism, one sacred love for all. One sacred love for all. You are loved and you are worthy of love. They are loved and they are worthy of love. We are loved and we are worthy of love. Unitarian Universalism is a movement with love at its core. One sacred love for all. And having faith, having faith in this, means knowing that if we live out this love, that's how we transform ourselves. That's how we transform ourselves so that we can transform our community. That's how we transform ourselves so that we can transform our communities so our communities can transform the world. Having faith means trusting that, even if we don't see that transformation in our lifetime. That is how we co-create the beloved community on earth that you always hear us talking about. That is how we find liberation for ourselves and for each other. It's from this theological center that our justice work must arise. In the famous words of Dr. Cornell West, justice is what love looks like in public. But this love isn't easy. It's too big to be easy. This love that we're talking about is an aspirational love. This love that must hold the center of our UU faith needs to be deep and it needs to be wide. It's not only a love for our neighbor. It's not only a love for the oppressed. It is also a love for yourself. It is a love for life. It is an abundant love. As we heard the Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis say in our reading earlier, it is a non-possessive delight in the world. At times, a joyful love. At times, a grieving love. What makes justice work urgent for you? Maybe for you, the urgency comes with knowing that you cannot fully realize your potential as an embodiment of love unless you are creating the conditions for all to fully realize their potential too. Maybe for you, it comes from the spiritual need to tear down the illusion that any of us are separate. Maybe the urgency comes with knowing that giving of yourself for the sake of justice, when that giving comes from the depths of love, love for life, love for yourself, love for others, then that giving is not an act of self-sacrifice. It is an act of self-enlargement. 
When we give of ourselves from this place of abundant love, we lose nothing. Instead, we become bigger, living more fully into our connection with everything. An expansive love. One sacred love for all. It is in the spirit of this holy love that I invite you to ask those dangerous questions of yourself today. Because dangerous questions lead to courageous answers. So ask yourself, am I truly living out my faith? Seek the answer with a spirit of radical truth telling. What does living out my faith look like when it comes to justice? Perhaps for you, it means loving yourself more fully, working through feelings of shame or guilt that get in the way of that justice-seeking love. Perhaps for you, it means cultivating spiritual practices and religious language that ground you in our faith's love. Perhaps for you, it means seeking out opportunities here at the fellowship or out in our community. Opportunities to practice love by giving of yourself and striving for a more just world. Perhaps for you, it means self-care and filling your tank with love to avoid activist burnout. Wherever these questions lead to, Wherever these questions lead you, may love be at the center of your journey. And may you remember that we journey together with one sacred love for all. May it be so, and amen. a love holding me. There is a love holding all that I love. There is a love holding all I rest in this love. There is a rest in this love. Part of our commitment to each other is to bring our joys and our concerns to this time together so that we can hold them in our community's love. It is our sincere hope that we can be a resource in our common quest to celebrate happy moments, seek healing and wholeness, and continually rediscover whoever and wherever we each might be on the path of existence. For those joining in person, after the service, you are welcome to place a fellowship sto- a stone in our fellowship chalice as a symbol of our loving community surrounding you supportively. 
or you can join a member of our care team in the back of the sanctuary who will be offering a listening presence. For those attending virtually, you can share in the chat box whatever joy, concern, prayer, request, or intention might be in your heart and on your mind. We'll place a stone in our chalice now on your behalf. For care and connection during the week, please reach out to myself or contact our office. If you'd like your news included in our spoken joys and concerns or our weekly joys and concerns email, you can call or contact anyone on staff or fill out our website form. We now turn our attention to the joys and concerns wider than this gathered community. We allow our minds and our hearts to reach out in ever widening circles, outward like ripples in water. We add our first stone to our water for the United States. As the CDC begins relaxing pandemic guidelines, together we hold all the diverse feelings that these changes bring. We hold together hope, a hope for some relief after two long, hard years. We hold anxiety and uncertainty with those who may not feel ready for some of these changes. We witness beloveds who are immunocompromised and children who have not yet had the chance to be vaccinated. We hold the complexities of this time in community and we pray for gentleness and grace as we move forward to what lies ahead. As that water ripples outward, we add another stone for Hong Kong. We hold the people of Hong Kong in love and care as they go through this devastating COVID surge. We pray that relief comes soon. And as those ripples continue, we recognize our interconnectedness across borders and oceans. And we add another stone for the people of Ukraine and also for all people around the globe who face airstrikes and military violence. We grieve the lives lost. We witness the suffering. We hold each other through fear and uncertainty and devastation. We pray for peace. We unfold all who are celebrating and all who are suffering in the embrace of our hearts. And we commit ourselves to acts of compassion and justice in service of those circles beyond our own. May this moment of silence help make it so. Our time together is coming to a close, which means our time to return to the world and our daily lives is beginning. Please remember there are always ways to get more connected here, both in person and online. You can read the Weekly Scroll email newsletter or let us know if you're not on that mailing list. You can also check out the back of your order of service. We are currently in the middle of our pledge season, so we invite you to visit the table in the front lobby to grab your pledge materials or just chat with the members of the generosity ministry team. You can ask them any questions you may have. Please remember to return your pledge form before March 20th. And now we have a video message from our generosity ministry team about our upcoming service auction. Hi, I'm Anna Fisher, the chair of the generosity ministries team. Thank you to those who have already submitted an item for the auction. Please consider if you have a service, talent, culinary offering, or special item that would have everyone bidding. We're collecting item submissions through March 13th, and then the bidding starts on April 3rd. One of our special multi-ticket items will be admission to the Tom and Ty show on April 23rd. 
Proceeds from the auction will be used to replace the playground and repair the pond. Check the scroll for more information and thanks in advance for making our auction a success. The fellowship youth are already dreaming of a new playground. I really like to swim so high. I dream I'm flying to the sky. The slide is always where I go, cause I don't like to move so slow. The climbing bars are where it's at. I love to be a jungle cat. I really want a playground here. Will you please help our auction this year? And now I will welcome forward members of our Green Sanctuary team for a special announcement. Hi, um, my name's Grace Quinn. I've been a member of the UU since October very proudly, I have to say. Um, I usually attend the 9 a.m., so I love seeing all the new faces. Um, and then I'm also the statewide organizer for the March 4th to Earth Day project. So March 4th to Earth Day is a statewide event that is taking place from March 4th, hence the name, to April 22nd, which is Earth Day. And it is eight weeks of consecutive climate justice rallies that are happening in over 20 cities across the state of Wisconsin. Um, some of these are hosted at 12 in the afternoon and others are hosted at 5 p.m. Um, we will be having, we have actually had them in Appleton at 5 p.m. at Houdini Plaza. Um, so I'd like to extend an invite to all of you to attend um, just to kind of cover what some of our asks are. We're asking for local and state and federal climate action. Um, locally, we're asking that we have a sustainability coordinator position and that we have local climate action plans across the state. State and federally, we're asking that Tony Evers and President Biden um, announce a climate emergency. Um, we also have a few other issues that are really important. Um, MMIW stands for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. This is directly correlated with the extraction industry. Um, so we're ask, asking that our local officials and our federal and state officials recognize that. We also are rejecting the pipeline, line five, right now that's in the process of getting permitted. Line five is a tar sand oil pipeline. It will contribute more to climate change than the entire Minnesota, um, Wisconsin, sorry, there's also a pipeline in Minnesota. <laughs> But that's another issue, but it'll contribute more to climate change the entire Wisconsin economy alone. Um, it also is disrespecting treaty rights and we should not be investing in a piece of fossil fuel infrastructure when we're transitioning to clean energy. So that's kind of the scoop on that. Um, but the Unitarian Universalist Church has been so kind to sponsor one of our events. So the Friday, uh, March 18th, they are sponsoring. So if you y'all want to show up to one of them, that would be the one to show up to, but you're also more than welcome to show up to the other Fridays. Again, it's at 5 p.m. at Houdini Plaza for the next seven Fridays, because we just had our last one last Friday. So just wanted to extend an invite to everybody. Thank you. And those are signs that we created at our beautiful art build. So thank you all that attended. Thank you, Green Sanctuary team. I now invite you to consider something from today's service that you want to carry with you. Maybe a phrase, a topic, a song. It is our hope that this will provide you inspiration and empowerment for you until we are together again. And now please join with me in our unison words for extinguishing our flaming chalice, even as we continue to hold its warmth and light in our hearts. As we extinguish this flame, let us go our ways with hope in our hearts, with our spirits renewed, and with a deeper understanding of life's mystery. 
Let us carry the light of compassion and commitment to build a better world. After our closing words, you'll hear a postlude song. We invite those of you who wish to, to stay for some conversation and response time. Some of our Justice Action Ministries facilitators will be available up front to lead a discussion here in the sanctuary for anyone who'd like to learn more about justice efforts here at the fellowship or who wants to chat about themes of the service for a few minutes. And if you're with us on Zoom, we welcome you to stay logged in for that discussion. And if you'd like to participate in that discussion, we welcome you to the front of the sanctuary for it. And with that, go in deep, abundant love, embodying that love courageously. Go in peace, knowing that we wait to embrace you upon your return.